Everybody ride share. Hey, welcome back to the Ride Share Hub. I'm Jacob Letman. You're you. This is the Ride Share Hub. You're back with me hanging out. And I'm glad you are because we've got a very informative video for you today. At least I think so. Uh, how about this? If you took something away from this, if you think it was informative, give it a thumbs up at the end. Or right now, just because you're a nice person. That's cool. Appreciate it. All right, you guys. Uh, hey, let's jump into this thing because I got a long list for you. Buckle up. It's going to be a ride. Today, we're talking about 20 secrets. They're secrets. They're not going to be secrets after I give them away. Anyway, 20 secrets that most Uber drivers don't know. What? Let's see if, if you know all of these. Kudos. That'd be awesome. And let me know in the comment section below at the end. All right, here we go. You ready to kick this thing off? Number one. Most Uber drivers don't know, not most, but some, uh, you can get a retroactive sign-on bonus. What? Yeah, you can. So that means if you signed up before, but you didn't quite follow it through, um, or you signed up and you didn't use a referral code, you can use one now so you can get a sign-on bonus. Awesome. Those details are in the video description below. Also, number two, you can drive for both Uber and Lyft. And if you haven't started driving yet, video description also has some links that you can click on and get signed up to start driving for both and you get those sign-on codes. So sign-on bonuses, retroactive or for Lyft if you're not driving for both Uber and Lyft. How's that? It's a good start to this video. Oh yeah, also on the note of that, you can drive for uh, Postmates and Uber and Lyft and uh, Uber Eats and what else do we got out there? Grubhub, whatever you want because you're an independent contractor so you can drive as much as you want for all those people. You have stickers all up your windshield, it'd be crazy. All right, number three. Ah. You cannot, cannot post videos of your passengers without their consent. Can't do it. It's just like any media stuff. You need written consent saying that you can use my face in your YouTube video. So if you want to have like the next <clears throat> hip hop rideshare YouTube channel where you make up hip hop songs with your passengers, that'd be pretty cool actually freestyling that's awesome and you can but you need to get written consent from your passenger number four hey there are more ways to make money while you drive than just driving come at me with that info bro all right i will i will a wheel uh stereo cargo rapify play octopus vugo and surf those are some apps, companies that you can check out. I'm not gonna get into those, that'd be a whole nother video. Actually, that's a good idea. That will be another video. Um, but write those down, check them out. You can make money selling things, promoting things in your vehicle while you drive for rideshare. So it's a good way to make some extra money. Also on that note, I will say that it is a good way, driving is a good way to promote um, any of your multi-level marketing companies that you might be associated. Me personally, uh, I sell doTERRA essential oils because I'm hippie and cool like that. And also Bocanico CBD oil. It took me a second. Bocam Bocanico CBD oil and doTERRA essential oils. So I have pamphlets about those in my back seats. And it's a good place to promote those and talk about those with your passengers. So anyway, these are different ways to make money while you drive. Number five, most drivers don't know that the best way to get tips is to have a clean car and create rapport with your passengers. Create rapport means like hit it off with them, have a good 
conversation. Yeah, good vibes, good chemistry with them. We have videos on that as well, so check those out. All right, number six, um, dash cams can be smart, can help your safety, but they are not legal in every state or city, so you need to check your local um, city or state regulations on those. I think the easiest way to do that is probably through the local DMV. You can check the website out for more information on that, but dash cams, good for safety, but not legal everywhere. And uh, side note, sometimes you have to inform or have a sign that says, hey passengers, you're on candid camera. All right, number seven, it is illegal to block the view of your windshield with a phone mount. So those phone mounts that attach to the windshield, that is illegal. Besides, those are bulky and crappy anyway. Get a magnetic one that you can put on your dashboard. That's what I suggest. Number eight, you need a ride share insurance. Why? <clears throat> well, rideshare insurance covers you during a certain during certain times throughout uh I forget. It's like when you're like you're logged on, you're waiting for a ride, uh blah. Anyway, rideshare insurance and insurance is important to cover all your bases that way and it's also important to be heads up with your insurance company that way if something does happen and they find out that you're a rideshare driver, They'll probably drop you uh, if you didn't inform them beforehand. So, got to have that rideshare insurance. Number nine. Mm, you can't do this one. You can't accept cash for rides. You can for tips. Definitely can for tips, but not for rides. Um, on that note, though, what you can do on the side of promoting yourself, you can create business cards that have your name, contact information, say personal driver, and you can hand those out to your passengers uh, if you do create a good rapport with someone, or let's say, I actually have this, a business professional in your area that needs airport rides frequently, um, then you they can totally hire you, that's a side thing. You're an independent contractor, so you can do that 100%, and uh, you can set up side deals with people, so yeah. Do, uh, do that, get some business cards, and uh, if there's people in your area that need rides, take care of them. Number 10. Ah, Uber only tracks mileage for trips, but not for all the miles. Okay, so when you're in a trip, so after you pick someone up, take them to their destination, that is all being tracked, but outside of that it is not, and uh, mileage is a huge tax write-off. Um, I use QuickBooks self-employed app, and there's also Mile IQ, and that is tracking your miles as you drive everywhere. And then you can classify those trips uh, into different categories, and then transfer that uh, information while you do your taxes. Anyway, that's how you can keep track of all your mileage, which is important because. Um, if you're signed on and you're driving somewhere to pick someone up, or if you're driving to an area for like um, a sporting event, let's say there's a sporting event like 10 miles away, but you don't want to get a ride before you get there, those mileage, that's all part of work. So you wanna be able to track all your miles, not just the ones while you're in the ride. Big money saver right there. Um, number 11. No unaccompanied minors are allowed in or around your vehicle ever. Just kidding. They can come around, but they can't get in and get a ride from you. No accompanied minors. Can't give them rides. Anyone under 18 years old? Nah. Unless they have an adult with them. Get them out. Or unless you put them in the trunk and no one can see them. Nah, I'm just kidding. Don't, definitely don't do that. That's Yeah, don't do that. That's a terrible thing to even joke about really um, number 12 this sucks but it's true passengers sometimes they leave false reports of you being a crappy driver yeah it happens so sometimes you got to uh, get in contact with with uber let them know your side of the story and that it wasn't accurate for whatever reason um, but it does happen that sucks 
Come on, people. We're just trying to be nice out there. Live life right. All right, I'm over it. Let's keep going. Number 13. Ah, yeah. If someone leaves their valuables in your vehicle, you can sell those on eBay. No, I'm kidding, you can't do that. But what you can do is you can get in contact with them and you can take it back to them and you can charge them a fee, a reasonable fee, uh, in order to, yeah, pay for your time and efforts of taking that back to them. All right, and on the note of valuables, say cell phones, definitely happens. Uh, number 14, uh, if someone leaves their phone in your vehicle, they can remotely turn that off. They can GPS track it and turn it off. And then hopefully get in contact with you and pay you to bring it back to them. Bingo, Flamingo. Number 15, passengers cannot drink alcoholic beverages in your vehicle unless they're willing to chug an entire bottle of Jack Daniels. Wouldn't that be a sight? No, yeah, they just can't drink alcohol in your vehicle. Open container laws. All right, moving on. Mm, yeah, this is a good one. Number 16. Uh, this is a good one. This goes along with the passengers leaving false reports. Um, you need to pick up and drop off passengers in safe locations, places where you can make a safe stop um, without people behind you. So if a passenger is standing on a busy road in the middle of the road or like at a bus stop, I've had that happen, you just go to the nearest safe spot and call them and tell them, I cannot stop there. That protects you and your safety. And uh, I've had, this is where the passenger thing, um, leaving false reports can come up sometimes. If you're dropping off a passenger and they want you to drop them off in the middle of a street somewhere and you take them around the block to a safe location, the closest nearest location, and they say, my driver extended the ride, wasn't willing to drop me off, blah, blah, blah. It's okay. You do the safe thing. You go to the safe spot to drop them off. Number 17. You cannot pick up passengers just anywhere in the airport while driving for Uber. You must go to the designated pickup areas. Areas. Um, again, if a passenger calls and they're not in that pickup area, you can say, try and help direct them if you know how to explain it to them. Otherwise, just say, I am here and I will wait for you for the five minutes. Uh, and then if they don't show up, cancel that or don't cast, cancel it. Uh, put them down as no show and get that no show fee. What else? Number 18. Oh yeah. If things are slow and you start driving around, you're missing out on rides. Just stay put. This goes back to having both apps, Uber and Lyft. If it is slow, it's good to have both. Um, but hang out in your area or the if there's a more populated area nearby, just hang out there, keep your apps on. You'll miss out on rides driving around and you'll miss out, you'll giving away that gas money. Number 19, if a passenger has the address wrong, their destination wrong, um, put it on them to change it. They should, they can't, what did I, how did I put this? They can, they're capable of, they can and should change the destination in their phone. Um, and if they can't figure it out, then pull over the quickest place that you can, uh, pull over, stop, and teach them how to change it in their app. Don't do it for them, don't do it while you're driving, put it on them, and if they have a problem like, well, we're wasting time sitting here, first of all, they're hardly paying anything for time. We don't make diddly on time driving, so you can tell them that, and it is their responsibility. Whew, all right, dang you guys. Number 20, we made it to the end. I'm feeling winded, you've heard me for too long, but this is a big one, another money-saving one. You can, you should look out for these coupons for both oil changes and for car washes. 
a lot of car washes do uh, membership deals. Those are great because you could just go at the end of every day, go through quick, and then a lot of them have vacuums, quick vacuum. Keep your car looking clean all the time. That'll help with tips. And then oil changes, um, because there's so many places looking for business, you can check any um, flyers that you get in the mail, Groupon, you can Google search oil change deals. I guarantee you can always find a deal on those and I go around to all sorts of different locations so that I can get those oil change deals. You can save a lot, a lot of money on that. So I spent, saved 15% on auto oil changes by switching to coupons. That didn't land as well as I was hoping it would. All right, you guys, there you go. Whew. 20 facts most Uber drivers don't know. If you took anything away from this video, again, big thumbs up. Feel free to share it with other Uber drivers. You're all awesome. You're all cool. Keep smiling. Make that money. Drive safe. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>